Have you ever lost control of the steering wheel on a windy day? Or panicked when the car swerved suddenly? Have you had such an experience? Cars are always at the mercy of air resistance. If we could reduce that resistance on the car, the car will go faster and farther with better fuel efficiency. The design with the lowest air resistance is an airfoil, the shape of an airplane wing. However, at high speeds, lift forces are produced and cars lose stability. We need cars with good fuel efficiency and improved stability. To keep these two contrary factors balanced, today's cars are designed using simulations with supercomputers. A research facility used to simulate the flow of air, a wind tunnel. Air flows past model cars and prototypes, simulating the vehicle in motion, in order to recreate a realistic picture of how the air moves. We measure the air pressure distribution and observe how the air flows by adding smoke. In some places, the air is turbulent. These are the places where air resistance is high. Trial and error tests and analysis of all the data collected require a huge amount of time. Large-scale wind tunnel experiments like this are essential in automobile manufacturing. However, aerodynamic development is a race against time. It just takes too long to do everything in a wind tunnel. Therefore, if we can run aerodynamic simulations on a supercomputer first and then direct the styling and aerodynamics, wind tunnel experiments can just be performed in the final stages to fine-tune the shape. In other words, to develop stylish cars with efficient aerodynamics, it's vital that the simulations and wind tunnel experiments are both used. This is an aerodynamic simulation done on an auto manufacturer's supercomputer. The color of the body surface, as it changes from blue to red, shows the air pressure on the car becoming higher. Around the car, red shows where the airflow is fast and blue where the airflow is slow. By repeating this kind of analysis, we learn which designs have less air resistance. By dividing the surface into pyramids and cubes, two millimeters to one centimeter in size, we analyze the aerodynamic forces. The whirls grow larger and smaller as the flow of the air constantly changes. The supercomputer analyzes this for a fixed period of time and then provides a visualization of the mean values. However, auto manufacturer supercomputers cannot reproduce a complete picture of the airflow. At Riken, we're engaged in more realistic aerodynamic simulations using the K-Computer, one of the world's top-level supercomputers. With the K-Computer, we can divide the space into segments of just 0.5 to 2.5 millimeters in size to analyze the airflow. Automaker's supercomputers can divide the shape into tens of millions of segments. But with the K-Computer, more than two billion segments can be produced. Delicate whirls can be reproduced because the resolution has increased by a factor of 60. Furthermore, automaker's simulations only provide a mean value for the airflow. In contrast, the K-Computer can show how the flow of air changes over time. This kind of aerodynamic simulation is only possible with K, which computes a thousand times faster than conventional supercomputers.
Wind tunnel experiments are conducted in a closed space with a lot of constraints. This means there are limits to creating realistic conditions, such as gusts or crosswinds formed when cars pass each other. On the other hand, simulation is an extremely good method, but there is still a limit to what the conventional supercomputers used by automakers can do. Therefore, we are developing a simulation model using our K computer to reproduce realistic situations of what happens to a vehicle on the road. By fully understanding how air flows around a moving vehicle, if we can then decrease the number of factors causing unwanted turbulence, fuel consumption and stability of the vehicle will improve. And if cars actually move as desired by their drivers, fewer traffic accidents will occur. Since the 1990s, all Japanese car manufacturers have installed supercomputers to simulate aerodynamics. As a result, supercomputer simulations have had a significant impact on the manufacturing process and cost reduction, and that has made Japanese companies competitive internationally. However, if we remain satisfied with our present simulations, sooner or later other Asian countries that are chasing us are going to catch up. It's said that the performance of the supercomputers now being used by Japanese car manufacturers is roughly the same as the world's fastest supercomputers were 10 years ago. On the other hand, our K computer outperforms those supercomputers that are now a decade old. In other words, K is like a time machine that gives us the power to look at automobile development 10 years down the road. When auto manufacturers start using the next generation of K computers, post-K, it will be possible to monitor the performance of cars in real time from the design stage. This will save time, reduce costs, and make Japanese car makers more internationally competitive in the future. <laughs>